So before we start talking about at what to do it, uh, how do you hold model model? We should think about a bit what we actually can do and what we, what we can do in model structure. And to think that actually the question is really how good model is and really what, what questions we ask. So if you have a sequence identity, which is not, as I told you before, not the best measure, but it's an okay measure for, for measuring similar attributes in sequences, particularly if it's more than 30%. If you have a high 60% up or something, basically the model you get is similar to what you get from an NMR structure in most cases. Of course, you don't get the details of something different, but for structure wise, it's very similar. So you can see an example here where basically everything looks the same. And it's useful for even for docking of small ligands and things like that. So you can really use it for design, you can use it for studies, you can use it for simulations, etc. etc. At lower level, you're more having an idea of more functional ideas, you can get an idea how things look like, you can look at the support of uh, site rate mutants, etc. And so on. And if you're at the even lower sequence entity, you are more interested about finding overall functions and particular variations of etc. And you can use for annotating functions by full assignments. So this is again some examples how they look like. So basically, the first example is a 77% sequence identity protein, and it's basically uh, you can't on the backbone level see any difference at all between the native structure and the models. Models in red and native structure is in yellow. At 40% sequence identity, you see there are starting to be some variations, particularly in the loop regions. You see a loop here to the top right, and it's actually quite different. So that is, where you, your model would be not able to describe exactly how things are packed in this region. And then you have at the even 30, lower the sequence identity, you have things that are, you see the, even the, some of the backbone things are different, you have add, addition at the end, etc. and so on. But it's still, the overall shape is very, very similar. So people always, for a long time, used some, what they call the twilight zone, to try to define what, 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 what sequence identity you have, and how well you model it. So basically, uh, Often people say 20% sequence is a good cutoff. If you have that, you have very little information. But given the rapid progress of alignment methods, there are many, many cases you make very, very nice models at way below 30% sequence identity. But in general, the law, if you have coverage of 100% and 20% sequence identity or more, you can have a good model. Otherwise, you can have high, you don't have coverage of the whole protein, you might have worse models. So it also depends on how long the alignments are. So 20% is a rough indication still. Yeah, so here's the same plot again. So you can basically see if you're up in the red corner where you have more than 20 for 30 and 6 identity and good coverage, you're going to do well. There are going to be some short things further down also. Uh, 